Philip Neal Jorgensen, 89 years old, 66 years of marriage, four married sons, 10 grandchildren, 21 great-grandchildren, 20 homes shared with our mom, three of which he helped build from the ground up, and the rest he renovated or improved with his carpentry skills and tireless work ethic. 20 years of farming, three years at a second job, because farming leaves you time for a second job, in a meatpacking plant, and 30 years as a federal meat inspector. As impressive as those numbers are, they don't come close, though, to describing the man who quietly and calmly led our family for so many years. I've learned over the past few days that Dad was a reluctant student who wasn't crazy about going to school. He and my mom, though, insisted that us boys go to college and that we find a way to pay for it ourselves, whether that meant putting money in a jar, putting half of every birthday and Christmas money given, <laughs> into the bank and a savings account or joining the Navy out of high school. Dad and Mom knew we need a good education to face the real world and live up to the potential that they knew was inside each of us. Dad was compassion and commitment personified. How many thousands of pounds of birdseed did that man put into the world? <laughs> if you needed help, Dad and Mom always seemed to know and would show up to lend a hand. You need babysitting? Mom and Dad have a cupboard. For a week, of course, you guys just get packed. <laughs> Starting a home renovation, Dad's tool belt was on, his hammer was ready, and a paint roller was set. If you wanted a color, though, other than antique white, um, you could expect a discussion about how well your house would sell if you didn't use it. <laughs> Need to clean out your garage? It's already done. You probably won't miss the thing that Mom and Dad chose to throw away. Mike, that's where the wire went. <laughs> um, they never wanted thanks or payback and said they always insisted. It was fun. We had a good time. <coughs> Pouring cement in the backyard of your house while you were gone. <laughs> and you know, because they were doing it together, I think they actually did it. Dad was the epitome of the parent transformed by grandchildren and later great-grandchildren. Quite frankly, I've given up trying to reconcile the father I knew as a kid and the grandfather I witnessed as his 10 years. <laughs> you want fast food? Of course you do! <laughs> then it was off to McDonald's or once, Burger King. Only once, right Amanda? <laughs> there were tears of disappointment at Burger King, but we weren't at McDonald's. <laughs> I've never been the same since. Um, you want to stay up late? Get up even later. Of course you do. No worries. I'll make those Mickey Mouse pancakes as soon as you choose to get up. Dad was the best possible audience you could imagine. He loved a good story, and nothing was more satisfying than getting him to smile that incredible smile and to laugh. My grandpa Bill, Uncle Carl, Uncle Doug could get him to laugh like no one else. Dad could not wait for the October fishing trip with them over the years. I'm actually not sure why it was called a fishing trip since those of us who never went, fish, never went on the trip didn't understand because fishing didn't seem to be a big deal. <laughs> Best I can tell, most of the time in Minnesota was spent either commenting that virtually every item eaten needs a lot of pepper, <laughs> telling epic length jokes that are so funny that you cannot retell them because you break up laughing just thinking about telling such a funny joke. <laughs> And well, <laughs> there was something about a coffee can on the boat in the middle of the lake that I will never understand. <laughs> Dad, of course, wasn't perfect, but his foibles said as much about him as anything else. Dad loved to travel and would drive happily and uncomplainingly to, I think, anywhere on the planet. But as much as he loved the journey, he cherished going home. Just like Cinderella at the strike of 12, going home was a non-negotiable, go home, go nowhere else but home event. So if your Chevy Impala station wagon is full of school-age boys and it's 50 miles to the Grand Canyon, but the Grand Canyon is in the opposite direction from home, you will go home. <laughs> Dad was a little bit of a warrior. In the same way that Barbra Streisand is a little bit of a singer. <laughs> Whenever any of us boys face a big decision, say a new house, a car, a job, you always appreciated Dad's advice. But as sound and as thoughtful as his advice would be, 
You could count on dad owning maybe more than his share of what I call the worry burden. Perhaps alone with mom, and perhaps on calls that, to ensure you really thought through this choice, that his concern was genuine and based on his deep love for all of us. And once the decision was final, he knew he'd support you in the end, regardless of the path you chose. Speaking of singers, Dad was one of the few full-blooded Danes I know, not blessed with the gift of song. <laughs> that, however, did not deter him, and he happily sang along with every hymn every week in church. He made up for his questionable pitch and lack of sight-reading skills with true devotion to the Lord, and for years his granddaughter's plea to sing bad for his grandma <laughs> was one of his favorite stories to tell on himself. Dad's faith was instilled by his parents, John and Bessie, and it helped him through good times and bad. That faith was a, faith was a bedrock to him and non-negotiable. That his family came to include missionaries, taking the Lord's word to the far corners of the world was, I'm sure, both a wonder and a blessing to my father. A year ago, Dad was asked, how can we pray for you? He could have listed his Parkinson's, he could have talked about his aching, arthritic back, or his failing hearing. But instead, he asked for a prayer for his family, specifically that everyone will believe in Jesus. I think it was the warrior in him that did that. The love that my parents shared for 66 years was amazing, is amazing that two kids who found each other at a Luther League meeting <laughs> in 1952 and stayed so much in love and spread and nurtured that love to our entire family over seven decades to me is a wonder. Anyone looking to solve the various mysteries of love need only look at my parents' life and love for the solution. So Lord, I hope you have the coffee pot on, <laughs> and you've got crackers and peanut butter. Dad hasn't had a good cup of coffee in a while, and we'd appreciate you taking care of that for him. And you, Lord, probably know better than we do that you've got quite a catch on your hands. He's a real keeper, he was a good man, and he loved us all. 